Hey Clashers and welcome back to another video on ring bases. Ring bases are everywhere, everyone likes to run ring bases but everyone hates to face them. So today I thought I would start a new series. What does this mean? I will try to upload series videos about specific type of bases to show you how to 3 star this base with different strategies. So today we're taking a look at ring bases like this one with Pekka Smash, with Super Bowlers, with Super Witches, with Queen Showers in general, with Blizzard, Electro Dragons, Air Spam and everything which is in the game, the same as Hybrid. So let's get started with the Pekka Smash. The Pekka Smash is one of the most flexible things and one really powerful technique before we're diving into the Warden Walk is actually just starting at the corner, forcing the queen to either side, you really like to go to the eagle early, and then using a bullion for the second row to take down expos, inferno towers, scatter shots, or warden. Everything which is giving your queen a lot of problems. This is what we did. In addition to that, you're going for something else. What does this is? Well, it is luring off the clan castle. The clan castle, luring that up before you're in 4000 expos, one 1000 uh, scatter shots and 5 town halls. No, you don't want to face the clan castle at this time. You want to face the clan castle when you don't need any rages whatsoever. As soon as the queen then is following her path, took down the uh, clan castle, then you're forcing everything into the base, or like your queen actually into the base, with using your Pekka Smash. This Pekka Smash is not really using any healers, instead you're using the warden ability to really empower it up, and depending on how the life on the HP of your queen is looking like, you can even rage it up like I just did. Why is this strategy so powerful? With this strategy, you really do not run into the town of poison with your Pekka Smash, and this makes this approach really, really strong, and not as random. Because I feel like I have seen many, many times that people are just like spamming everything into the core, well, we're getting to in just a couple of seconds, which works as well. But this is just so much more consistent because you do not lose everything to the town of poison. With this charge method, you're going to rank ring bases everywhere, but at the same time, it takes some practice and especially some routine to know where exactly might be some black mines to bait a blimp and where some blimps are actually getting a lot of value. But as soon as you figure that out, Pekka Smash is going to be incredible strong versus ring bases. But I told you something about the easier way. And we want to dive into the easier way because it is easier. But at the same time, it is more risky. But now, let's check it out. So first off, on this one we're using Super Bolus, but it's the same approach pretty much with any Smash strategy. So what you're doing is, most of the time you're tr trying to have first, go into the Eagle early. Second of all, do not face the clan castle during attacking the town hall. So let's say the town hall and the um, and the clan castle would be switched. Then you would have to choose a different angle, most likely from the top left or bottom right. But on this one, you face the eagle really early. You're going to face the clan castle before you're facing the town hall. And facing the clan castle inside the town hall poison is like the, one of the worst things. So really good angle. And now you have a couple of options after you did your warden walk. The first option is using a siege barrage like I just did. But you can as well use a lock launcher, which is really powerful as well. On this one, I just wanted to have this bit more... A little bit more power, a little bit more um, a bigger push into the core, and then everything is going in there. Yes, we are facing a double multi inferno tower setup, which is not the nicest, but at the same time, just having the healer switching and having everything just clump together and overpowering everything is already really good. Do not like do not feel like okay i need to use the warden ability early no you need it for the core as soon as you're getting in between of two scatter shots things like that you're going to get wrecked otherwise and this entry for this is not optimal either because as i said this double cross shot scatter compartment setup is really scary but anyways we're getting into the core we're taking everything down and then the Roy champion with the yetis from the siege products can easily clean things up but hey, I talked about something different as well, where you can use a lock launcher. We're going to talk about that as well in a second, and when this is sometimes a really good idea, and what should you, what should you look for when deciding? Lock launcher, siege barracks, what are you looking for? But you can see, this approach, just like this warden war corner, spam and pray everything in, works really well. Next approach with the super witches, and as I said, everything... Out of those smash strategies, super witches, super bonus, and Pekka smash, all working with the same entries pretty much. This one now, we're going to use the Lock Launcher. Why exactly? Because we have a lot of low HP buildings on this left side. What does this mean? The Lock Launcher is going to take down the Archer Tower, the Air Defense, the outside buildings, and with this is creating like a funnel. And this means we do not have to invest anything else into the funnel, 
Instead, we just use the siege machine with that. And that's sometimes a bit better because you can get second layer funneling done as well. And not like the siege barracks where you have to wait for the Pekka and the wizards to take everything all of like take everything down. So this is going to work as well. What do I have you look for? Look for really HP buildings, which you can take down with the logs, and then it's going to work. Next approach is going to be hybrid. Hybrid is still really solid, especially in ring, on ring bases. If you figure out um, how to approach those bases, it is still powerful. It's not easy, but it can work. So what are you looking for? First thing is clan castle placement. On this one, we want to lure out the clan castle with our queen charge. The best clan castle lure sport pretty much is on the left side. Why exactly? Because at the top side, it's one tile further inside. It's only one tile, which is not too much, but at the same time, it is one tile. So it could be all the difference. So we're going to charge in from the left side, making sure our queen is getting funneled in. And as soon as she's deciding which way she wants to go, like to the bottom, to the top side, as soon as she's deciding that, we can prepare our next stage. For us, we want to have the queen walking to the bottom side to make sure that we can start with the king and the siege barracks for the funneling process from the top side already. We already did the war break, to be honest. The next thing then, it's going to be sending the hybrid into the core. This is a really scary thing because, well, there can be a lot of things going wrong, but at the same time, this is the most like the best way to tank down those ring bases in general. Now we have our king actually walking around the top side, clearing out everything over there with the siege breaks. I did start the king a little, late, a little bit late because I was really afraid of losing my queen to that clan castle. But at the same time, I was able to do it. The timing wasn't perfect, but hey, it should should be okay. Harbor is coming in. Maybe I should have not placed the first heal, but I guess I had to. And now we are forced already to use the second heal really early. This is like the worst case scenario. Typically, you want to have two heals in the core, which is the most optimal thing. Sometimes you even need to freeze a scatter to be able to delay your second heal. Making sure that nothing is dying to the um, to the town of poison. And if possible, delay the warden ability for the town of poison. But again, this is the worst case scenario where I feel like it's really good to show that as well. That even if everything is going wrong, we have not used the warden ability or like we were not able to delay the warden ability uh, even further. Um, the heal spells were running out really early as well because of our first heal. The queen um, had to deal with the clan castle for way too long and our king was way too late for funneling. But still, we're getting this three star in. And queen charge hybrid is for sure a really strong technique still with this approach. Like I said, go for the clan castle. Use the king on the other side for funneling and then the hybrid just like YOLO everything in in between of king and queen to make sure that ring basis is no problem whatsoever. But remember, do not wait too long with that hybrid. Next approach is going to be air spam or e dragons. Both of those are pretty much used the same way. Most important building you have to look at is... No, it's not the town hall, it's the clan castle. The clan castle is a crucial building to take a look at when attacking with air because it is, well, a clan castle, which could be super minions in there, then everything is fine. But it could be ice golems or lava hounds in there as well, which would be a huge different story. If you have something like that in there, you don't want to do that out with your king, with your queen, with your royal champion. So use your heroes on the other side of that clan castle. Use the e-dragons more towards the clan castle side. And that is obviously up to you if you use a blimp or a slammer. I'm a huge fan of the slammer. I feel like it's a really, really big power boost for your army. If it's E-Dragons or if it's Air Spam, like I said, both armies are getting used the exact same way on those type of bases. And then your heroes can just finish off the base. And because the setup of those ring bases is that you have most of the guys, uh, most of the time um, Expos in the core, most of the time even ground Expos, your air is going to take it down, your air is going to take it down, and your heroes are going to survive forever because Expos are the, are the counters for high HP um, ground troops, for example, if you have that for on ground. And the heroes do not take any damage if those expos are down. So really, really strong technique on those ring bases. And on this one, swaying your freeze, swaying the royal champion. Is that even more disrespect in an attack like this? So really good job to Yuyan, making things look easy with the E-Dragons. But I think we have a couple of more strategies to go through. The next one is going to be Blizzard Lalo. I think Blizzard Lalo is just like the king in taking down ring bases. It is so, so powerful. But at the same time, not that easy. Well, at the same time, I want to say, do not go for those juicy town hall blimps. Most of the time, they are baited. And you know already, and I did that many times, 
I was really upset going for those tunnel blimps knowing that I ran into a bait. No, instead you're looking for something else. First off, clan castle placement. You want to load the clan castle with your blimp. Next one, going for pathing. Making a cut in this ring for us, taking down expos, scatters, and inferno towers, as many important buildings as possible. You're looking for over here for Queen, Royal Champions, Scatter Shots, Expos, Inferno Towers, or Eagle. Things like that, those biddings are your main target. And obviously, the pathing. Never underestimate a really solid pathing, like taking down a huge part of the base. Even though there's not like 5 Scatter Shots and 10 Inferno Towers in there, it might be still like a good good shot and giving you good pathing for your heroes because you have your heroes after that still, right? Like, I took down already quite a bit, but my goal right now is to take down the Town Hall which would be kind of like the cherry on the cake. So overall, this approach is incredibly strong. The next thing is with using two heroes already to get this push going, but then using the Royal Champion to... One option is just creating the pathing for your first two heroes, and the other option is that first two heroes are creating the pathing for the Royal Champion. So sending a delayed Royal Champion into the core of the base is sometimes really powerful. On this one, we try to use the Royal Champion on the outside, making sure that there is a cut created. What does this mean? The cut pretty much means that the Queen has no other chance of going where she's supposed to go, or like any other troop, wherever you want to create the cut and whatever you want to create the cut for. And does this does mean we have this cut at the bottom side everything is now going into the core or at least my queen which is the main thing and after this lalo is like this lalo i could play there probably with my feet um but yeah so we took down the defending royal champion with our headhunters with the warden ability at this point there's like the inferno tower and skeleton which is uh, still left alive but to be honest i don't even let them play the game because i would just keep freezing them so the scatter and the multi inferno tower is not doing anything but hey, now we had already Pekka Smash or Smash Attacks in general. Queen Shot Hybrid, we had Blizzard Lalo, we had Air Spam as well. There's something still missing. There's something still missing because we are going to take a look at Queen Shot strategies now as well. What does this mean? Well, we're going to take a look at this Queen Shot Rocket Loon attack. Wait a second, if everyone is like saying, Itsu, I have never played Queen Shot Rocket Loons and now I'm not planning to do that. I'm playing Queen Shot Dragon Riders, I'm playing Queen Shot Lalo. Guys, totally fine. That's totally fine because it's the exact same approach. I am playing right now with pretty much any strategy, uh, which is Queen Charge base most of the time, with the Yetis inside the Siege Machine. And when I say inside the Siege Machine, it means you have the options in between of the Lock Launcher, the Blimp, and the Slammer. Those are your main three Siege Machines with using this strategy. If you're taking ring bases, you had you have one option, which is like the Pekka Smash approach. Queen charging at one corner, blimp the second row, forcing your queen inside into the core with like a king and everything. But at the same time, I feel like sometimes there's a lot of damage on that queen. But this approach, I feel like so far for me, was the best. I'm starting at one corner, running in either direction for us, we ran to the top side, and then using the lock launcher and the royal gem and the king, if I would like to, even the warden, and push everything inside. With this, I even have the yetis inside the inside the lock launcher still, which are going to help me a ton to take down defending heroes, take down expos in the second row, which I could have never ever reached with my queen. So you can see the pathing right now, which I'm creating, is perfect. The queen has no other way to go than to the core, and at this point, I mean, to be honest, I would have not really needed the warden ability with this one. So I could have used now Lalo from the right side, Dragon Rise from the right side. I could have used everything now from over there. In this attack, I'm using Rocket Loons. But at the same time, that's no problem. As I said, you can use everything after that. If you're a Queen Charge Dragon Rider player, if you're a Queen Charge Lalo player, it does not matter. After this, every single approach is going to switch up this base after that. Now for us, we're using those Rocket Loons, getting this juicy 3 star, but now for you, it's time. First off, do you like this new series? Should I keep going with that? If that's a yes, let me know which base you would like to see next, like which base type. Is it box bases? Is it teaser bases maybe? And if I have missed a really important strategy, which strategy should I add to my strategy list on showing you guys how to 3 star those type of bases? Have I missed any important ones? Have I missed any crucial strategies on how to 3-star those ring bases? Let me know down below in the description. I will see you guys back tomorrow for the next video. Until then, see ya and bye bye.